Art has always played a huge role in my life. I consider my art public art. People mostly recognize my work from my murals for the most part, unless there's somebody that has been following my art for a really long time. A lot of people discover me as an artist kind of through my murals first and then see my other work after that. My name is Bianca Romero. I'm an artist and muralist in New York City. My parents both immigrated here. My dad is from Madrid. My mom's from Seoul, Korea. They're both designers and my dad came here. He's a illustrator and graphic designer. He came here in 1980 or maybe right, before, right around then. He was designing in Madrid and had the dream of coming to New York City and making it, you know, big in New York. And he started his own design agency here in Flatiron District many years ago and really built a name for himself. And then Parsons, my parents met. Yeah, it's a very New York story. And, <laughs> you know, I grew up um, right by Union Square. And so that whole area is kind of like my uh, backyard. Bianca, es el día de cumpleaños de Bianca. Cuatro años, yay! My dad had one of his studios in our apartment on the top floor. Like, you know, I used to go to his, he owned a design agency on 23rd Street. I used to go there after school. Like, just, it was just such a big part of my life. And I tried for a while to not do art. You know, I went to school for marketing. I did other things and always kind of kept art as a hobby. And then I had a couple friends over in my apartment and they saw some of my paintings that I was just doing on the side for fun. And they said, oh, you should just do a little art show. And I did an art show I saw that was at a little coffee shop in downtown Brooklyn. That's not here anymore. <laughs> and um, yeah, I think that moment I did the show, so many people came out, I sold some a bunch of paintings. My art is contemporary mixed media art uh, for my paintings in particular. I use a mixture of collage, which is a lot of ripped uh, street posters that I take off the walls and magazines and newspapers. Um, but I also mix that with acrylic paint and spray paint. And then they're typically on wood, wood boards. And for me, I've always been drawn to collaging and mixed media. And then over the years, I kind of realized that it's a little bit a part of me being of a mixed background. It's kind of like bringing different narratives together and kind of like figuring out and creating something new, uh, which I kind of <laughs> had to figure out on my own, like, you know, growing up. I'm kind of like an embodiment of this like mixed media art, I suppose. But I've always been drawn. I love the idea of like taking posters off the buildings. It's also kind of pays homage to like New York City. And I've always been drawn to like, you know, all the wheat paste layers that you see on buildings in the city and stuff like that. Um, it's very gritty <laughs> textures. New York City became a ghost town. The global pandemic forced the city that never sleeps to come to a screeching halt. We have therefore made the assessment that COVID-19 can be characterized as a pandemic. Amidst the global pandemic, the view remains the same. Deserted streets. People all around the globe are staying at home to prevent the spread of COVID-19. During the pandemic, it was definitely a roller coaster, and, and the pandemic kind of forced me and everybody to kind of slow down and take a break and 
It was a good opportunity for me to stay in and focus on painting more like for myself, not for a client, not for any project, but more just like painting how I was feeling or the different stages of the pandemic kind of. I also did paintings about all the Black Lives Matter protests. There was just so much going on. There has been rising hate attacks against Asians, uh, not just verbally, now it is getting very physical. There were a lot of hate crimes. I didn't necessarily have one specific instance that I personally experienced, but more so I saw it happen to a lot of people around me. New York was a very scary time during that period of time. When I think about the fears, I think about my parents. My parents are afraid to go into the park. They are afraid because they don't know what's going to happen. What happens if they get shoved when they walk down the street of East Broadway to do their shopping? I just felt like as a muralist, I needed to do something and, you know, use my art for something good. So I started reaching out to people and trying to find a wall to paint a mural to kind of create representation that I didn't see growing up. And it was way more difficult than I thought it would be. Um, I mean, typically you can find like a small wall somewhere in the city that will probably get tagged over in a couple weeks. And for me, I didn't want that. I wanted something that would actually hold a lot of space in the city and like literally and figuratively just take up space. And I just felt it represented that community just a lot of times feeling very invisible. And I just wanted to kind of break that cycle and just, yeah, paint something that was like larger that would almost like command attention. So it was actually very difficult because within the culture, in Asian culture, it's very standard to kind of keep your head down and don't draw attention and don't speak up and just kind of mind your business and not ruffle any feathers or anything like that. So uh, for me personally, it was challenging because I grew up that way, but also a lot of businesses in like Chinatown and a lot of places didn't want a mural because they were scared. They were actually scared that it would draw attention and bring more crimes to them. You know, they didn't want like any attention, whether it was good or bad, like it's just so against the culture that, and especially during a time when people were getting beaten on the street, like they rightly so didn't, were scared of that. So it was actually very difficult for me to find a wall. Um, and in my search, different people, I started posting a lot online, on Instagram mostly, looking for walls because I know so many people within, you know, curators and different things. In my search, I was connected to this organization called Thrive, and Thrive works with the city a lot. And then I also got connected with different council men in different districts in the city. Thankfully, different friends I know also work for the city, so I slowly started kind of like getting different people on board to help me find a wall. And then once I found the one that I painted on, which is on Delancey and Eldridge and Lower East Side, we got the mayor's office on board and then the city department of immigration. And then within the immigration department, they have a hate crime task force. So everybody kind of got on board and um, helped me bring this project to life. It took me two months.
months at least to find a wall and that's me working like all day every day you know putting proposals together and reaching out to people and trying to get something so at least two months and then once everyone was on board there was you know a phase of like everyone agreeing on what I was gonna paint which was another whole thing and then the painting itself I had me and then two assistants and that took about five or six weeks. So all together it was probably like four months from like scratch to <laughs> finish. We give a special huge thank you to Bianca for creating what will be an encouraging, beautiful, inspirational mural. This is the kind of art that has great power, the power to heal, the power to create togetherness, the power to create stronger communities. And this healing power is what we need right here and right now. The role of an artist in society is to kind of be the voice of the soul of society. It kind of, and anything, if, if it's art or music or film, or, Photography. It's kind of like capturing snapshots of what society is going through during the time. So it's so important. Artists play such an important role in society. And I think the pandemic really highlighted that. Like a lot of people couldn't work, were going through a very dark time, and everybody turned to music, to film, to, you know. TV shows, which acting, and they're all forms of art. People turn to art, to murals. Like, that's a perfect example of how crucial art is to society. I don't think I can imagine a city without murals. 